This is Eric Mwade. Today I want to look at a very important part of understanding how the market works and this is something that I've been using for a couple of years now. When I came up across this it was just from understanding that there is such a thing as called a golden ratio and this is from, from Wikipedia. If you have time just check out Wikipedia and check out the golden ratio and just try and understand what it is but once I figured out that there was a mathematical reality about how things in the universe work in terms of relationships between many aspects of our day-to-day -day life and you can you know take the time to research them on your own just to if you want to have better understanding but the bottom line is there is such a thing in the market called a golden ratio now it's been in existence ever since times going back to civilizations from way back you know the Mayas the Incas the Egyptian any pretty much a scientific or any society that was rich in mathematics or understand the, how the universe operates was very aware of this very important golden ratio here and I'll try and just run through some things here so you can see but anyway the number you need to watch is 1.618 this is the golden ratio this ratio here 1.618 and this thing is absolutely phenomenal once you understand it remember when I started using this I just had reasoned backwards I knew that there was such a thing as a golden rule and I, I was trying to figure out where in the market does this show up and so I started just I did some tweaking of my analysis of how I look at things and it just all fell in place some of the moves in the market are pretty much explained without any shade of doubt in my opinion by the fact that markets are moving above or below critical portions of its RSI and the RSI is a measure of sentiment so I'm just running through here as you can see these things have been since way back as you can see the use of this uh, golden rule all the way back to 400 BC uh, they, they've known about this and then also Fibonacci and I'm gonna touch a little bit of that if you have any technical analysis experience then you know that traders like to use a Fibonacci number the Fibonacci sequence this sequence is add two numbers start with one and zero you end up with 2 and then you add 2 and 3 you end up with 5 5 and 3 you end up with 8 you just keep on adding two numbers and the next number as the numbers get bigger and bigger they're gonna be giving you a relationship that is based on the golden mean this has been used for millennia so we are not the first ones discovering this now as far as the stock market is concerned traders know that they use a Fibonacci retracement which is based out of the understanding of Fibonacci number you're gonna see that the most important ratio here is that ratio there and it is um, there's a second ratio which is this but that's not very important what you need to know is that this ratio here all right because if you add these two numbers here you get one in other words this number plus this number you get one you get parity so it's a very important number so as long as you understand this one then this one is a given let me run through here just for fun let's take a look at how this relationship works in nature this is now the main equation here but did you know that your credit card is designed to reflect the golden ratio in other words the relationship of this length here and this length over this length has a relationship of 1.618 things in nature have that symmetry and I'm just running through some things here based on this number you can see it's been used to calculate lots of things in mathematics the pentagram is full of golden ratio you observe this in nature relationship of the number of leaves on a tree as you go up the branches are based on Fibonacci numbers they are not just happenstance the shape of a seashell is based on Fibonacci numbers the relationship of such a plant like this one every time you know once you start relationship of the number of leaves on the outside to the next level to the next layer and to the next layer and to the next layer and to the next layer until you come to the center is all based on Fibonacci numbers so this is something that you find in nature the universe itself is designed in such a way that it obeys nature and did you know that the human body is probably one of the most golden ratio replete or the length of your hand as opposed to your height is pretty much based on Fibonacci numbers almost you can say we are engineered to reflect the golden mean and you can see the length of your finger is based on Fibonacci numbers this green part of your finger and the next one is based on Fibonacci numbers. the red and the yellow and are based on Fibonacci numbers and even going back all of this is based on scientific symmetry also notice that the size of your teeth 
from one tooth to the next is based on Fibonacci numbers, 1.618. So it's not just happenstance. What I was trying to show you here is this is a very important number. It shows up in many things. Maybe one more here. See what we got here. I'm just going through running some stuff. Even the relationship of the distance between planets is based on Fibonacci numbers. And the rotation around the sun is also based on Fibonacci numbers. Thing. Even art. A good artist is going to know where to place objects on a canvas because if they obey the Fibonacci number, then they are going to look beautiful to our eyes. Fibonacci numbers and nature. You can calculate the population growth in rabbits and even the population of cows and the growth of cows, honeybees and family trees and all these things. All of them are based on Fibonacci numbers. Let's take a look at some other interesting things here. The number of leaves on a tree as you go up the branches is based on Fibonacci numbers. You find this in plants all over. It's all Fibonacci numbers. Everything is based on Fibonacci numbers. So needless to say what I'm trying to show you here with all these things is that at the end of the day, this Fibonacci number is something very legit. So how do we apply this? If you've been watching and following me for a while, every time the market moves above or below critical levels on the RSI, and I want to explain this. I think this is the first time I go into detail explaining this. The explanation is simple, pretty much. But what I wanted you to understand is the importance and where I came up with the idea. Uh, this is my idea as far as I'm concerned. I don't know that anybody else ever even considers this as part of trading. When I use it, it explains a lot of things. So we have three levels. Number one, on the RSI. Now, what I've done here, this is your RSI indicator. I've just enlarged it so we can see. Notice I've taken the Fibonacci retracement tool. So 0 to 100. So you see that at 61.8 which is pretty much 0 0.618. Remember, this is the number we are looking for. Sometimes you can say 1.618, but the bottom line is the 6.18. So you can see 6.18 is somewhere where things happen. For example, even when I was making this video, the very first chart I pulled up was the S&P 500, which is the chart in front of you. And you'll notice that without too much tweaking. I didn't even tweak anything, but you'll notice even on this chart, once we moved below 61.8, the market fell here in the S&P. We came back here, moved above it, the market had a rally. We came back here for a midget, had a sell off here and the market recaptured and moved higher, recaptured the 61%, fell below 61%, recaptured it, market went to new highs. And you can see lately we stalled here exactly at 61.8 on the weekly. Now, by then, I already knew that that was a significant area. I have to say that one of the reasons why I was staying short in this month here is because I knew that market stalling here with the RSI resistance and the fact that it stalled at 61.8, that's a major resistance level. Also notice on the flip side, now remember 0 0.618 if you minus 1, uh, one is you get a 0 0.382 which is the other Fibonacci level and you'll notice now that we bounced off this level once we moved below this met 52 we close and we came back and recaptured this level bounced off came back on this 31 percent retracement and the market has been moving higher the last four weeks let me show you that so you can see and I remember, I just put the Fibonacci retracement tool here so it can show us what it means. You know, the Fibonacci retracement tool is what traders will use to determine how far the market goes. You'll notice now I've used the tool on price. And you can see that on price, we've been holding on a weekly closing basis above 38.2. What I wanted to show you is where I get the 30.90 level, which when markets move above this level on the RSI, if it's moving above it, you're going to get a superb rally. If it's moving below it, you're going to get a sell-off. On the flip side, the other level is 69.10. Now you'll notice if you add the two, you get 100%. So they're just the same thing looked at differently, but it's the same thing. In other words, Whenever markets move above 69.10, the markets will take off. When markets move below 69.10, there will be a significant sell-off. We already know that the 
Fibonacci numbers are things that happen in nature. Okay. But now what I wanted to point out to you is when markets are bullish, which means that the RSI is trading above 50. This is where now I want to explain something to you. So, oops, let me, let me bring that back. When markets are bullish, hope that works. Now it might not work because I need to, it's not going to work. So when markets are above 50, at what point do they turn absolutely bullish? What I reasoned was above 50, there should be other levels of Fibonacci numbers. And you'll see that the Fibonacci number at 69.1, I'm, I'm sure that is, it's what it is because I can't get it to, sh to stay at zero on the, on the RSI. But at 69, 69.10, you'll see that now the Fibonacci number, once the market moves above this level here, something changes because now the Fibonacci numbers are above 38.2. Now you go into this different natural behavior that is powerful. So every time a market moves above or below 69.10, you will observe that a tremendous change in behavior happens. If it's moving above 69.10, an absolutely huge thrust to the upside takes place. When it's moving below 69.10, on any time frame, hourly charts, daily charts, weekly charts, monthly charts, moving below it, you're going to see a big sell-off. Now remember, we already know that moving above or below 50 is where generically we move below 50, we are turning bearish, above 50, we are becoming bullish. So every move above and below this line, the 50 level, is always going to lead to significant swing in the market. On the flip side, let's take Let's just flip things around. Let's take this to zero. This is not going to stay at 50 for some reason. I want it to stay at RSI 50. But you see now, on the flip side, when markets move, now if, if this red zero, you'd see that at 38.2 or 61.8, whichever way you want to look at, when markets move above or below 30.90, when they move above 30.90, you get a big thrust. When they move below 30.90, you got a huge sell-off because this is when you see that the Fibonacci numbers now, after you've been trading in this area here, once you hit that level about 30.90, something changes in the psychology of the stock. Now, you'll even notice on the S&P 500 that it bounced just at 30.90. It just had a, it touched it and bounced back. Because if the S&P 500 could have stayed in this area below 30.90 longer, you would have seen the market cascade to much, much bigger lows. Now, I want to change something here so that you can understand. I'm going, trying to get this back to zero. And this is this won't stay at zero Can uh, for some reason. But now I've just flipped them around. So 61.8, we, we know that the golden mean is 1.618. I'm saying that when the RSI on any time frame on in any chart at 61.8, something naturally changes. Once you understand that, then you see the, how powerful this is. It's the same thing. I've just flipped the Fibonacci too. So here you see that while the market is trading, 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 but once it moves above 61.8 on the Fibonacci too, which is equivalent to RSI being at 69.1, something very powerful happens right here. There's a change in sentiment. On the flip side, if it moves below 0 0.38, oops, 0.82, if the equivalent on the RSI is 30.990. Now, if you add this, you get 100. And if you add this right here, if you take this off, let's take the you get 1.00. So these two levels here on the RSI are huge. That's why you'll notice that most charts that you look at, traders have always known that around 70 something happens to the stock. You'll notice that most will just put 70 but without understanding that it's actually 69.10 is where this line should be. And you'll notice the other line is at 30. Over time, traders have observed that things happened around 30 where stocks either sell off or they bounce off this level. But it's not 30 actually, it's 30.90 based on Fibonacci numbers. And I hope that makes sense. 
because understanding this crystallizes a lot of things that happen in the market. So just know that the levels that I talk about, 50, level 50 on any RSI, big things happen. On any chart, 69.10. That's why I always say you want to own stocks that are moving their monthly RSI above 69.10 because now you're walking into the golden mean area. This is where stocks move very fast to the upside. And the other level we always need to be watchful is 30.90 on any time frame. Once you understand the importance of this, these are not just random numbers. These are very important numbers in understanding the psychology of a market. Once you grasp that, then these numbers, and once you look at and study charts, you'll see that when things move above or below these levels here, there's a sudden change in sentiment or a powerful move takes place. Understanding that sometimes helps you get into a stock before that happens so you ride the upside or makes helps you avoid a stock because it's going below this critical level and it could sell off. This is Eric Moade. Peace and blessings. <laughs>